Hello everyone, I'm Ray Shim, the Nutritious Food Architect. I'm currently a Platinum with Young Living and today I'll be talking about einkorn, the ancient wheat, today's staff of life. I'm sure by now everybody has heard about the gluten-free lifestyle, but you have to be careful about all the claims. Case in point, you can even get gluten-free water. Due to celiac disease, gluten allergy, and gluten sensitivity, the gluten-free market is well over a billion dollars and growing year over year. Why the huge growth of celiac disease, gluten allergy, gluten sensitivity? And is gluten-free lifestyle the answer? About 15 years ago, when my son Ryan was about 10, he had many sensitivities due to his extreme prematurity. We had to take him off many foods, including regular bread, because of his gut sensitivity. At that time, gluten-free was in his infancy, and the breads were hard to find, dry, heavy, crumbly, and taste like the paper bag they came in. In 2011, Dr. William Davis released the book, Wheat Belly, talking about how the current wheat is causing all types of health issues, including weight gain and digestive issues. In the book, he talked about how he was able to tolerate einkorn wheat. That was when I started to look at how I could incorporate einkorn into our diet. Little did I know that Gary Young was already studying and growing einkorn. At that time, the only source of einkorn in Canada was in Saskatchewan, and they came in clay plastic bags with handwritten labels. The price was high and the shipping was almost as high. So what is wrong with today's wheat? To compare the difference between the ancient wheat and today's wheat, let's take a look at the ancient wheat first. Ancient wheat has been around since about 10,000 BC, and it has been part of our diet ever since. It is so ingrained in our lifestyle that some of the people call it the staff of life. Our bodies have adapted to it through evolution. If you were to eat like your grandparents, the chances of intolerance would be much lower. Traditionally, wheat was grown rich soil until full maturity, reaching the height of humans. By allowing the wheat to mature, it had an opportunity to develop all of the enzymes. The wheat was then manually cut. The cut wheat was tied into these little bundles and left out in the field for shocking. They look like little teepees. This process is called shocking and it further developed the enzymes. The cut wheat was then milled into flour. Today, hybridized dwarf wheat is grown in nutrient depleted soil, creating a wheat depleted in nutrient. The wheat is cut before full maturity because they are more hardy and can handle the rough handling of these huge combines. This process robbed the wheat of the opportunity to fully develop its enzymes. You will not find the cut wheat left out in the field for shocking because time is money and the cut wheat is whisked off for milling right away. This robbed the wheat of another opportunity to develop more enzymes. A practice that's gaining traction in the harvesting of modern wheat is to drench the whole field with Roundup. This process makes it much easier to harvest the wheat with less to clear afterwards. This process also forced the wheat to release more seeds as they die, resulting in a better yield next year. The active ingredient in, in Roundup is glyphosate, and it is ab abundance in our environment. It's not a matter of whether we have glyphosate in our bodies, but it's how much. For more information, please Google Dr. Stephanie Seneff on wheat. Dr. Seneff suggests a diet high in sulfur or supplement containing organic form of dietary sulfur to counteract the glyphosate in our system. So how do we get from ancient wheat today to, the, to today's wheat? This is done through a process called hybridization. Firstly, hybridization is similar but not the same as genetic modification. Genetic modification is crossing the genes from one organism with the genes from another organism. For example, scientists in Beijing are genetically modifying cabbages by putting scorpion venom into cabbage so that when the caterpillars eat the cabbages, they die. 
this venom is supposed to be modified so you will not suffer the same fate as the caterpillars. Let's hope they do a great job with that. So we do not have any commercially genetically modified wheat, but we do have hybridized wheat. Wheat is hybridized, so scientists cross the genes of one type of wheat with another type of wheat. It is similar to natural cross-pollination, like the wind blowing the seeds from one type of field to another. But unlike the forced process, the natural process takes many, many years for the new species to saturate the market. In the first hybridization process, a 14 chromosomes einkorn was hybridized with a 14 chromosomes of wild grass, creating a 28 chromosomes emmer wheat. In the second hybridization process, the new 28 chromosomes emmer is then hybridized with another 14 chromosomes of wild goat grass, creating the 42 chromosomes modern dwarf wheat. During these two hybridization processes, many new proteins were produced. Dwarf wheat is coveted because it's easy to harvest and has less wastage. So now we have a wheat that is low in nutrient, low in enzyme, and contains lots of new proteins that our bodies have no idea how to digest. Gluten is a type of protein that got modified in this hybridization process. After the two hybridization of wheat, we now have three super issues with this modern wheat. Issue number one, a super, super carbohydrate found in starch called amylopectin. The digestion of this carbohydrate may raise blood sugar and insulin level, causing an increase in triglycerides and cholesterol leading to a fat accumulation. Eating bread is close to eating sugar since the glycemic index can be as high as 95, 95 versus glucose which is the standard at 100. Eating four slices of wheat bread raises your blood sugar level higher than 12 teaspoons of sugar. It's found that a diet loaded with modern wheat increases your calorie intake by an average of about 440 calories. Do you want to lose some weight? Stop eating modern wheat. Dr. William Davis, author of the series on wheat belly books, was able to help his patient drop lots of weight just by removing wheat from their diet. Issue number two, a super gluten that is highly inflammatory. Hybridized gluten is being blamed for many health issues, including celiac disease, gut issues, joint issues, brain fog, skin issues, and many others. Dr. William Davis has many success stories on healing his patients of a myriad of illnesses just by removing wheat from the diet. Issue number three, a super drug that is highly addictive. A normal diet includes wheat for breakfast like muffins, donuts, and breakfast sandwiches. Wheat for lunch like sandwiches and pasta. And finally, wheat for dinner like dinner rolls and pasta. Not only is this contrary to food rotation for better health, but it's highly addictive. Have you ever tried to stop eating wheat cold turkey or ask someone to stop cold turkey? I'm sure you agree with me that it's virtually impossible. I think I would have more success taking cocaine from an addict. Now, even if you don't feel anything due to these issues at the moment, it will add up. You have a better chance of handling modern wheat when you are young as opposed to older person with a declining immune system. Why stress your body until it breaks down before you take action? This is where Young Living reintroduced einkorn. The ancient wheat that has not been hybridized, so the little gluten that it has is unhybridized. Therefore, it is free from all of the super issues of modern wheat. Einkorn is more nutritious. Compared to modern wheat, einkorn is 50% high in protein, 300% high in beta carotene, 3,500% high in vitamin A, and 250% high in lutein and zeaxanthin. 
And I'm going to taste better. Have you tasted commercially available bread lately? I mean, really taste it. Chances are you get more flavor in the paper bag the bread came in. Iron corn has a nutty taste, which gives it a wonderful taste profile. Since this iron corn is from Young Living, it follows the seed to seal process as all of their therapeutic grade essential oils. To learn more about Young Living's commitment to its higher quality products, visit seedtoseal.com. Young Living also has an additional advantage over other einkorn producers by rotating the land with lavender at about 10 years. Young Living research has shown that lavender can restore the nutrient einkorn removed from the soil. Einkorn in turn restores the nutrient removed by lavender from the soil. This is a winning combination. No other einkorn producer has the ability to do this. In Canada, we have a slightly smaller selection, so we have the following products. Einkorn pancakes and waffle mix, a mix of einkorn and other gluten-free flours like brown rice, amaranth, sorghum, dokla, and tapioca, creating a blend with 0.53 unhybridized gluten, 0.53% unhybridized gluten. A lower gluten mix, but nutrition powerhouse. This is in contrast to regular flour, which can have up to 14% hybridized gluten. Another product is the pure einkorn flour with only 1.21% unhybridized gluten. Einkorn rotini, easy, no fuss meal preparation. Einkorn spaghetti. Finally, einkorn flake cereal. They are baked so the nutrition is retained as compared to the commercially available cereal where they are subject to extreme high heat. Since Young Living is actively developing more Einkorn products, new Einkorn products could be available. So check our website for the latest releases. Our Einkorn flour and flour blends are similar and sometimes even better priced than what's commercially available. This is even before the credit risk you receive by being on Essential Rewards, which can be up to 25% off. So much for that myth, Young Living Network marketing products are more expensive. Up until the end of 2017, Young Living has been growing einkorn on three farms. They are in Mona, Utah, Fort Nelson in British Columbia, and Simeon de la Rotin in France. The total size at that time was just over 2,000 acres. The bottleneck was the milling of the wheat, so that you will have noticed some of the einkorn products would go out of stock periodically. In January 2018, Young Living bought an additional 12,000 acres near the Skyrider Ranch in Tabiona, Utah, to grow more einkorns and hopefully enroll other farmers in the area to grow einkorn too. Young Living has been able to prepare 1,000 acres of land so far for Einkorn, and Gary has approved plans for building a mill. This will enable the seed to seal process to occur in-house. This will also greatly reduce the chances of Einkorn products going out of stock. Young Living is fully committed to provide you with the best wheat available. Working with Einkorn is similar to regular flour. The major difference is einkorn flour doesn't absorb liquid as well as creating a dough that is too wet. You can reduce by liquid by 20%, but sometimes that is not possible since so this is virtually impossible. For example, to reduce three eggs by 20%. Or you can increase the amount of einkorn flour by 20%. You should also make some minor adjustment to other dry ingredients to compensate for the increase in the amount of flour. What can you make with einkorn flour? How about coconut lime cookies? Sticky buns? Banana bread? Lemon lavender bar? Wolf bear muffin tops? And of course, bread. Crepe cake? flatbread or pizza, fresh pasta, 
the possibilities are endless. This is your life, your wellness, and we invite you to be empowered. Don't stress your body anymore, so take a step to better health with Young Living Einkorn products right now. Thank you for, our, for watching and bon appetit.